Hey there, how the heck are ya? I'm Al, and as you know, it's Sculptober. So I've created a time lapse in ZBrush Core Mini. Before we watch it, please subscribe. Let's do it. So the first thing in ZBrush Core Mini that I do is use the snake hook brush. I create a large brush size, and I'm just trying to pull out some of these forms. And it's gonna look really, really terrible for a long time, but I promise it's gonna get there. So I've kind of shaped out maybe this dinosaur head and the neck. Pull out the tail, the legs. I uh, used inflate, beef up that stomach a little bit. But typically what I'll do is use snake hook and just stretch things out. Then I can use clay build up and inflate to make it better. Now you'll see with the arms, I had some issues with snake hook because it you can't mask in core mini. So instead of pulling it out, I needed those arms close to the body. And with snake hook, it was messing up the torso. And like I said, you can't mask. So I decided to use clay buildup and just kind of sculpt in the same direction to pull out the, the forearms, um, the biceps, the forearms, to kind of block out my character. Kind of looks like Yoshi right now. And that same process with that clay buildup brush, I'm just scribbling and scribbling to pull out those fingers. And I kind of had them curve down a little bit. Talked about this in a previous video. I like to get in landmarks, pretty standard to do in ZBrush, but I drew the orbital socket on this character and I'm carving out the mouth cavity. Got this idea in my head about what I want the mouth to look like. And one of the things in Four Mini that's super limiting is you cannot add any subtools. I started with a sphere and I have to do everything from a sphere, which can be pretty frustrating. But in this time lapse, you're gonna be able to see that, wow, you can pretty much do anything. I like to think of it as like a traditional sculptor sculpting in a, a block of marble, right? It's all one piece and they're insanely talented and they don't add, most of the time, don't add other pieces. Like they're not adding another marble piece. If your statue is holding something, it's just carved one straight piece. If we have that kind of philosophy, it's gonna mold how we make this, no pun intended. Same kind of thing, pulling out those claws with the clay buildup. I use the pinch to sharpen the claws. It's important for me to really just beef up some of these areas. That way it can be seen at a distance. The meaty areas like around the claws, just so it reads well, because this is like a larger piece, so to speak. So I know the final shot, it's gonna be zoomed out because I have to get the tail and the head in there. But I don't want super fine details that won't be seen. I'm kind of exaggerating some of those features. I'm constantly, as you can tell, just rotating around my model. Just rotate back and forth, check it out from different angles. It might look great from this angle. Zoom out, see what it looks like from a distance. It's super close, check all the angles. And at this point, it still really looks pretty bad. Some of those main forms are in there, but it's still looking rough. So as I'm doing the eyes, this is one of those things where in ZBrush or Blender or whatever, I could have added another shape. But core mini, you simply can't. So that is definitely a challenge to get a an eyeball in there. It's doable. It's just, it's not very fun, honestly. And I will definitely have a similar problem with the teeth. But now the character is starting to come to life, right? Some of these facial features are in there. Now on my machine, anytime you get upwards of like 350 to 400,000 polygons, or I guess active points, I start to feel this lag. So what you can do is press low, medium, or high, and it's just, it's like a decimation master. So it's going to keep all the major forms, all the forms, and then just lower your polygon count. Now you have to watch out when you do that because you will lose some detail, but I do it several times in the sculpt and just without an issue. Another limiting feature of Core Mini is I think you can only have like 700,000 polygons or something. So definitely not a lot. So at this point, it is looking pretty good, right? I got out of the valley of the suck. And when I started ZBrush, I really wish somebody would have told me about that. I don't remember where I heard it. It's a common term now in the sculpting world, but valley of the suck. And I'm speaking about 
Whenever you start a character, whether it's Blender, 3D Coat, ZBrush, it is going to look terrible like you saw at the beginning for a while. But if you push through, the goal is to get past that Valley of the Suck and come up and actually make something. And I didn't quite understand that when I started creating things in ZBrush. I would just like, why can't I do this? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do this? I would see amazing sculpts and I just thought I could never get there. But I really had to just keep pushing and pushing and try to get past that. And it really clicked when I would watch like uh, Blizzard artists or Bungie artists who are using ZBrush and their sculpts all look terrible at the beginning. They really do. So even professionals now, that's just kind of how it works. And as a noob, years ago, I didn't know that. So if your sculpt sucks, just keep pushing. Hopefully it won't suck anymore. Now, if you are very new to this, it's quite possible that your sculpt uh, sucks at the beginning, it sucks in the middle, and it sucks at the end. But that's okay, dude. That's a, that's a whole nother conversation. Just keep going. On these skin folds, like I said, it's very exaggerated. But I went in there and I added some of that uh, beefiness to it with clay buildup and inflate sometimes. Same thing around the arms. So it gives the illusion that there's some fat or some flaps of skin just kind of being compressed there. So anytime that I'm in ZBrush Core Mini, one of the things that I do right at the get-go is take my standard brush and turn the Z intensity all the way to zero. And what I do with that is I typically just don't use the standard brush in normal ZBrush anyways. I don't use it, I don't like it. So what I'm doing is turning it to zero and you'll see that I grab the standard brush a lot, but with a value of zero, it's not actually sculpting. So linked above is the ZBrush Core Mini Pro Tip. So if you're interested in what in the world, all the details that I am doing, watch that video. But Cliff Notes is that it's actually changing the underlying topology using that uh, Sculptor's Pro mode. So what I'll do, set the value to zero, make a small brush size and just paint over, like scribble on my mesh, and it's gonna increase the density of polygons in that area, which in turn allows for greater detail. And it's much smoother, so you'll see me doing that to smooth out parts of my mesh, or if I were working on the gums and the teeth. It's good for those fine, minute details it's one of those things that I don't think there's any documentation on it, and really only a ZBrush user would know that that kind of hidden feature is there. I could be wrong, but I really don't think there's any instructions about that. Uh, and then I started pulling, I don't know what the, on a lizard, the flappy skin down, but it was like, oh my goodness, this looks like a, a turkey. Let's just run with that. Uh, still needs lots of work. Working on the claws now, using clay buildup. I've used almost every brush. I think I've used every brush in the sculpt, so the ones that they give you, they're pretty solid. I wish they gave you the damn standard brush. I know Slash is pretty close to it, but it's not the same. So I'm diving into the hand a little bit. I'm exaggerating some of those features, that way I can see it from a distance. Using clay buildup to pull out the claws, snake hook to shape, and then I'm pinching. You'll see that I use clay buildup and just kind of draw where the knuckles are, some of those landmarks once again. That way I have a guide when I'm making this hand. And one thing that you notice from the beginning is like there's no masking in Core Mini. That would have been super helpful. I can't pose this character. The shot that you saw at the very beginning of this video was uh, I took this model into ZBrush, did some smoothing, and then used masking in the transpose tool. Just do some simple poses. So as you can see, the character is really starting to take shape. I'm hinting some of those smaller details, those areas that I just missed, particularly around the shin and the, the foot. I didn't do too heck of a good job with the foot or anything, but this is Sculptober. So this entire sculpt, minus the posing and renders, took me about 90 minutes. So everything that you see here just been sped up and it's about 90 minutes worth of sculpting. Just adding some of the chunkiness around, I don't know, these plates, I guess that's what they're called. As you can tell, my knowledge of dinosaurs is pretty lacking. Uh, but add in some of the meat around there, it just makes it feel like these plates are protruding from the body. And now we get to the teeth. So I kind of had a game plan from the get-go, but as soon as I got to the teeth, it was kind of a hassle. Like, if I were doing this in Blender or ZBrush, I would make the teeth and the gums a separate thing. 
and I didn't want to just do a closed mouth. That's that's too easy. So I use clay build up. Since I carved it in, I needed to build that up again. Otherwise, it would have looked really weird. Uh, so initially, I just did this like, oh, these little lines. Okay, that's being really lazy. I didn't do that. And I'm going to do just a tooth at a time and just kind of build up some of this form. And the end result, I like it. It turned out okay. I definitely got a little sloppy down there towards the right. Notice that I am working super, super close on these fine details. And I don't stay there forever. I'm going to zoom out, see how it's reading from a distance, zoom back in. That's super important when you're sculpting. I'm getting some of those gums in there. The gums and teeth are reading okay on that side, and that's what I'm after. Honestly, I'm super happy that I chose to do this in ZBrush Core Mini. A lot of you have asked for tutorials, and I've done some YouTube research, and there's not a whole lot of stuff out there for Core Mini. I still think it's a fabulous tool. It's a lot of fun, especially for a beginner. There's no sense in purchasing software if you're a beginner, in my opinion. What if you pick it up and you're like, ah, that really wasn't for me. So Core Mini has been a blast to play with. It's definitely a headache at times just because I'm used to ZBrush. Blender is also free, but what hurts a lot of people, not hurts, what is a hassle for a lot of people is even just that learning curve of Blender. There is a, a greater learning curve than this. And Blender, when it works well, has a much better capability. You can do much more. Like I mentioned, you can add... Uh, if I were to do this in ZBrush, I would do the eyes as separate pieces. I would do the gums and the teeth, both separate pieces. Each claw would be separate. And then those plates would be separate as well. This workflow, it worked fine. It was a lot of fun and it was, it was a good challenge for me. Hey, thank you for sticking around in this video, watching my video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. And I plan on making more ZBrush Core Mini tutorials or content. If there's something specific you would like to see, let me know in the comments below. I will see you next time.